It's that easy. There you go. And it's that easy. That even play? Does it play for us? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't play okay. for us. I don't know. But it's still easy. Well, you can do this easy. at home. You could do this at home just like we do this <laughs> yeah. at home. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hi, it's Wolf the Podcast. Hey. How you doing? Good How's it you. going? I am so white. <laughs> I mean, what else is no? <laughs> <laughs> Dad. I think the shot's too bright. Yeah. Guys. Oh, well. Hi. Wolf Den Podcast. Couple things uh, yes. I wanted to say off the rip. I think we have super chats on YouTube. I Ooh. think. Try it out, guys. Give us money. <laughs> also, we've been advised that this time when we do the podcast, we're gonna make the YouTube live stream private, and then we're gonna upload it as a video. We're just testing okay. something. We're doing yes. a lot of tests here yes. we on want, the Wolf Den podcast. We want to bring you the best Wolf Den podcast experience possible, and also grow the channel as it were uh, yeah. expand the brand we like as our you, father but would we say we could use more of you yes uh anyway good to see you we got many things to talk we about do today. a big follow-up from last week's main topic that was fast oh big <laughs> yes i wasn't expecting it to happen this fast no. to be so big and to be so harsh yeah uh, not looking good for Yuzu. No. And also Citrus, some collateral damage. Yeah. That hurts me more. <laughs> I didn't realize they were connected, but I guess I it makes sense. I didn't know that either, and I'm way more upset about Citra. Yeah. Uh, anyway, other news. What else is there? I haven't, I, I don't, you, uh, you did this. What else is there? Uh, we got things going on with EA and their Star Wars games that they are, may or may not be making. Okay. Right now. Uh, Rockstar workers are in revolt. Workers' rights, to all that jazz. Good. Um, Love to see it. We do have some good news regarding two uh, video game developers ex uh, exiting the shackles of big AAA development. We'll talk oh, more about okay. that later. Okay. Um, and many, many more. Farmer Gutch with $5 Super Chat. Did it work? It did. It Congratulations. Did. Thank the you, first Farmer one Gutch. ever on the Wolf Den Podcast YouTube yeah. channel. Uh, also say thank you to underscore for the 73 months. That's old. Yeah. Uh, who else? We got Kendall Evans with the four months, Papa Will and Daddy Bob back at it again. Thanks, dude. That's, that's us. Uh, and Razzle Jazzle, thanks for the 41 whole months. So let's, uh, I'm mad at B&H. What happened? I ordered another camera. <laughs> <laughs> and they tricked me. Okay. The website says uh, low stock. Okay. And then you order it, and then it says back ordered. Not that until they take your money do they tell you that it's back ordered. So that happened with me with Entertainment Earth. I was pre ordering. What is that? It's a action figure uh, shop. I was pre ordering a G.I. Joe figure, mm -hmm. and it said pre order available. So I went to pre order it. Then, like, you know, a week after I pre-order it, it was moved to back-ordered. Yeah. So I'm like, that's, okay. That's pretty much that's exactly weird. what this is. And then, like, the alleged release date came and went. So I emailed them, said, hey, what happened? You know, am I getting this toy or not? And then they shot me an email, said, oh, Hasbro uh, discontinued this figure. You're not getting it. And then a week later, they officially canceled my pre-order. Oh. I don't like that. What, it was, no. the, what was the toy? It was a uh, cover girl. From G.I. Joe Classified, which is apparently a hard to find figure. I had to go to some random like third party site to find it because I'm not paying eBay prices. This one? Yeah. It's supposed to be a $25 figure. It like it goes on eBay for like 50 bucks. Jesus. Yeah. I'm not paying $40. It. it says $40 yeah. right there. But I got it. It's okay. Don't worry about it. I got 50 got bucks on eBay. Yeah. You, you know too much. <laughs> I do. I like I like G.I. Joe. All right. Uh, turbulent rip. Thanks for the subscription. I uh, appreciate it. Let's talk about how there is no more use. Oh no, we can't talk about that yet. We no. have to talk about it's March. Yes, everybody. And we can't talk about uh, video game piracy without first uh, paying our dues to video game corporate overlords. Because if you give them money, if you give Sony money every month, you get free games for your PlayStation Plus subscription. I could have sworn that. Sifu was it was one already. I thought so too. I think it was just like heavily marketed on Sony. I think it launched on PlayStation. Okay. Yeah. So 
Yes, for the month of March, starting today, you get EA Sports F123 for PS4 and PS5, Sifu for PS4 and PS5, uh, Hello Neighbor 2 on PS4 and PS5, and uh, Destiny 2 Witch Queen for PS4 and PS5. These are big games. Uh, yes. I mean, Sifu I want to play the most. Yes. Uh F1? Sure, why not? Yeah, that means people, a people, racing game. People are nerds. Yeah. Uh, Hello Neighbor 2, I always hear about this game. Yeah, that's one of those games that's got like a big cult following. Yeah. I thought it was just like a weird like little cartoon game. Apparently it's like really scary. Uh, Destiny 2 The Witch King. Now, which DLC is this? Because I... I don't know if this is the one that's supposed to save Bungie. I probably own this because i paid for something right um major expansion destiny 2 well when did it come out february 2022 yeah i definitely have this all right well uh that i guess that's good because uh if you've ever wanted to get into destiny it's a huge pain in the ass now because yeah. it's like free to play but you can't do anything you can only play the game for like 20 minutes and then it yells yeah. at you to buy some sort of dlc you can't even play the main destiny 2 game the one that was on the disc when you bought the game doesn't exist anymore yeah you have to buy their bullshit so uh here you go now you can actually play a little bit of destiny 2 if you have a uh subscription otherwise try c4 yeah that <laughs> uh that's that's it right we don't do xbox anymore no because they don't do it anymore nintendo is random when they do their free games wolf den dad says oh, sifu boy. i eat sifu on fridays during lent i told him to touch grass today i don't know if I he saw actually that. did <laughs> i saw that i don't know if he knows that's a meme He's probably thinking, do I have to cut the grass? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not I'm not near my lawn. I hope my boy's going over the house and cut the grass. Uh, uh somebody somebody in the chat, I lost it, wanted to Oh, here it is. Lucas says, downloaded roller drum for you, Will. The speech moved me. I was getting a lot of like messages <laughs> saying, like, I downloaded roller drum and you were right. The the game is good. You're I get, doing the world a service. I get like you know people who like on the roller drum dev team liking my tweets every time I talk about roller oh. drum. That's how like much of an advocate I am for that game. I guess so. maybe I should play this game. You roller drum. Fucking play the game. Uh, crying BB girl. Thank you for the Prime subscription. All right, let's talk about Yuzu being dead. Yes. Okay. If, if you weren't here last week, uh. Yuzu, uh, Nintendo ordered a cease and desist. Well, not even that. Just over a week ago, Nintendo okay. sued the developers of the leading Nintendo Switch emulator, Yuzu, for facilitating piracy at a colossal scale. Now it appears that Yuzu will give up without a fight and give Nintendo everything it wanted. And it affects the 3DS emulator, Citra 2. No. According to a joint filing, Tropic Haze has not only agreed to pay... $2.4 million to Nintendo, but also says Yuzu is primarily designed to circumvent and play Nintendo Switch games. The company agrees to permanently enjoined. The company agrees to permanently be enjoined uh, from working on Yuzu, according uh, to hosting the, Yuzu. What the fuck does enjoined mean? Uh, that's, I think it means. Instruct or urge someone to do something. Yeah. The okay. company agrees to be permanently enjoined from working on Yuzu, hosting Yuzu, distributing Yuzu's code or features, hosting websites and social media that promotes Yuzu, or doing anything else that circumvents Nintendo's copyright protection. Uh, oh, and it will surrender the Yuzu.org uh, domain name to Nintendo, agree to delete not only its copies of Yuzu, but also circumvent all circumvention tools used for developing for developing or using Yuzu, such as, and then it just lists all Tegra the tools. RCM, uh, Hecate. Oh, wait, shit. Hold on. Uh, oh, okay. The, these are things that aren't particularly owned by Yuzu, I believe. I think that they're, they're just being ordered to remove these from their yeah. possession, I guess. So it's, it's Tegra RCM, Hecate, Astrophere, Lockpick RCM, all of this stuff that is used to, uh, hack the switch yeah or rip games and stuff and that's not all they also have to hand over any physical circumvention devices and modified nintendo hardware 
to Nintendo. It also agrees to not delete any other evidence that infringes Nintendo's IP rights. That's kind of fucked up that they have to hand over modified switches. But I guess the argument there is that they use these modified switches to facilitate piracy. Yeah. Yuzu and Citra developer uh, Bunny uh, confirmed in the Yuzu Discord that both the Nintendo Switch and the Nintendo 3DS emulators are affected. We write today to inform you that Yuzu and Yuzu support of Citra are being discontinued effective immediately. And then it lists the, the letter to everyone on the Discord. Yeah, so you can see their letter by going to their website. Even. Yeah. Uh, they, they have the, the letter on their website. Uh, the big... Uh, Point of contention here on their letter is somewhere in it they say piracy was never our intention and we believe that piracy of video games and on video game consoles should end effective today we are pulling our code blah 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 um yeah i i remember we hope our actions will be a small step towards ending piracy of all creators works that isn't how i remember oh no this was the this was the quote yuzu and its team have always been against piracy it's right there in the beginning of yeah. the quote i should have read that first that's the one i was like no you haven't <laughs> like i'm on their side here i don't right. want them to be taken down i want yuzu to exist in some way mm-hmm. um but the big there's two big question marks here. The one of them is that they were making what forty mil, forty thousand dollars a month on yeah. Patreon, or fifty thousand dollars a month on Patreon. That's probably what did them in. That's one of the things that did them in. Mm-hmm. But also, in the in the lawsuit from Nintendo, they specifically say when Tears of the Kingdom was coming out, uh, a lot of people were playing Tears of the Kingdom before the game came out yeah. on Yuzu. And Yuzu optimized Yuzu to work with Tears of the Kingdom yeah. before Tears of the Kingdom came out. How did you get Tears of the Kingdom? I didn't get Tears no, of the Kingdom. No, I mean, how did they get Tears oh. how, how did Yuzu get Tears of the Kingdom? Okay, yeah. They didn't get I it think... legally. I, Nintendo yeah. didn't, give them Yuzu, uh, did, didn't give them Tears mm-hmm. of the Kingdom early. Yeah. They pirated Tears of the Kingdom yes. or got it somehow. Mm-hmm. And... uh you know, it's either they pirated it or they uh, they got it through illegal means because yeah. the game wasn't out yet. Well, the game leaked uh, before it <laughs> yes. was released. Yeah. And, a bunch and they of Nintendo- used that leaked yes. copy to optimize Yuzu. And a bunch of Nintendo games have been leaking early before, you know, street yeah. date. So, you know, I think Yuzu was just taking advantage of a situation and Nintendo, Nintendo isn't blaming them for it, but Nintendo is going after them Nintendo's for taking pretty much advantage blaming of them for it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I I honestly think this lawsuit might not have happened if the whole Tears of the Kingdom thing didn't happen. Probably not. If Tears of the Kingdom didn't leak early, mm-hmm. um, Yuzu might still be around today. Maybe because C- not only were people pl- people were that was the only way for people to play it early was to have a leaked copy and play it on Yuzu, and it was pretty made pretty easy thanks to Yuzu. Yeah. Also, there were people who don't have a Switch or don't want a Switch, refused to get one. Didn't want to play Tears of the Kingdom on a Switch because it ran worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they opted to just get it for free and play it on Yuzu. Yeah. So uh, they, they in that way, they absolutely facilitated piracy. <laughs> um, that being said, I think that there was a case and could have been a, 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 a position for Yuzu to exist without facilitating piracy. Uh, and I don't think they held up that end of the bargain i think it it was pretty clear that they uh were doing some things that were a little illegal i was like i saw some tweets before i should have saved most of them but apparently like part of nintendo's argument was that they had they had their ninjas go into uh yuzu's discord Mm -hmm. and find evidence of them like taking like user data and like admitting to like stealing roms and leaks and stuff and using that to build their 
uh, their platform. There's some evidence of them sharing ROMs, yeah. which is, you know, obviously not yeah. uh, not legal. Here's one I found. Uh, the Yuzu devs settled to avoid discovery. They were going to get uh, fucked with multiple infringements for making ROMs and distributing them between the Yuzu devs, often pre-release of games. They yeah. allegedly had a ROM stash on their Discord too. Nintendo Ninjas were inside the Discord watching. Now all the Yuzu devs have turned over all their electronic devices, websites, and logs. Oh, and Yuzu was running a uh, telemetry in the back in the background collecting anonymous data. So they were not doing they were not doing this altruistically. No, they really did think they were bulletproof. Yeah. Uh and and I mean they I, honestly they might be because it was all under an LLC. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's some people who are gonna owe a lot of they owe two point four million dollars right yes. now. Uh, and I don't know what that means. I mean, maybe some of their Patreon, maybe their Patreon money can pay for that, but uh, they're going to probably, I mean, it must be able to, if they, they were able to settle right away. Yeah. I mean, usually, you know, like the, like the Bowser guy, what the yeah. hell was his name? Uh, Gary, Gary Bowser. Yeah. He had to, he has to pay for the rest of his life. Basically he yeah. has to pay like monthly, every paycheck goes to Nintendo. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this might be a, a similar case. Um, or at least some of the people who, who worked on Yuzu. Uh, but again, I, th I think that uh, it's a shame because this could have been a... Uh, they're, they're, Yuzu could have positioned itself to be uh, against piracy or, with, or within illegal means because every Switch game comes with a sort of key on it. Like, if, like mm -hmm. you have a, a cartridge copy of Breath of the Wild. Yeah. That has a specific key that's that's unique to your copy of Breath of the Wild. Right. They could make it so that you need the key in order to play the fucking game, but they didn't do that. Uh, and they didn't do that for a reason, because no one would use Yuzu if you need the key. They'd right. rather just pirate the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but it would give Nintendo less of a reason to, to make a big stink. Uh, the other thing I have to say about this is it could have been a lot worse, and I think that this is actually not the worst outcome. Yeah. Uh, they settled and they owe a lot of money. Uh, and this is a win for Nintendo. Yeah. But it was settled. So there is no precedent being set right now. Right. It was just the end to this particular court case. Yes. Yeah, so but that, that doesn't mean anything becomes law. That doesn't mean you can use anything in future court cases. Yeah. So the worst case scenario would have been if they fought Nintendo and lost. Mm -hmm. Then the precedent would have been set and Nintendo could have had free reign to go after any right. emulator they wanted to. Mm -hmm. And they kind of do now. Right now, there's no... Right now, there's there are laws... Right now, Nintendo can use uh, laws to their advantage and, and, and try to take down emulators right. and stuff. Um, there's some laws that uh, will that people can use to fight against them. Yeah. For the most part, they can just say, Hey, we want millions and millions of dollars and we're going to, and we have the lawyers to, to, to run you into the ground. Yeah. Um, uh, you're still, you're facilitating stealing games, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other emulators are either going to have to lawyer up and fight back or they're going to have to just shut down. Like, like, yeah. like Yuzu did. Um, so, Right now, the precedent that's set in the, the courts is the stuff from the 90s. Um, yeah. That we talk about all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and that seems to make emulation in some forms legal. So we like that. So it's good that that's not being overturned. Yeah. But uh, no one's fighting against Nintendo. So yeah. uh, they're pretty much being allowed right now to just willy nilly. They're they're calling the shots. Well, because the deck is stacked in their favor, you know they're the ones with the money and the resources to hire, you know, yeah. as many lawyers as necessary. Most emulators are developed by small teams, you yeah. know, so it's not like you know, four dudes in their basement, you know, has has the money to fight Nintendo in a big legal case. You know, it is you know for all intents and purposes, David and Goliath. Yeah, right here. It's. I think it's reasonable for Nintendo to not want something like Yuzu around to right. facilitate piracy. I think it's uh, unreasonable for our court system to not recognize that if I own a piece of software, I should be able to do whatever I want with that well, piece I think or a piece of hardware. That's the current argument in our favor. 
because as the law stands right now, emulators are legal. Yeah. Being able to play NES, SNES, Genesis, even Switch games on a personal computer or device that isn't the original device is legal. Yeah. yeah. The issue comes with how you get the games on there. Yes. You're supposed to provide your own games, meaning you buy the, the game yourself and then you can play it on another device. The problem is most people don't do that. They just Google what they're looking for and download it from it, the wrong it site. It is just so much easier yeah. to, to, to do that, to, yeah. to pirate it. Mm hmm. Like I like with Switch games specifically, you have yeah. to do a lot of shit to. Eat. I mean, I have a big ROM collection, yeah. and and I have ways to rip the games. But yeah. sometimes it's just how could you I know. resist just pressing download? Yeah, <laughs> it's just so much easier. But still, I, my biggest fear is that Nintendo uh, overreaches, and they create a precedent that you can't do whatever you want with their software. Well, this base, this cut um, that fight off at the legs before it, you know, before it even started. Yeah. So that's not, again, that's not the worst case scenario. Yeah. I, I don't think this is that dire for us emulation fans. I do think a Nintendo does overreach a little bit uh, with the fact that Citra is now shut down. Yes. Because Citra is a 3DS emulator and Nintendo officially no longer supports the 3ds you cannot yeah. buy a 3ds you cannot essentially use a 3ds anymore with official nintendo software so that's a good point i'd like to bring up the lawsuit can i do a control f in the lawsuit let's see citra no results so <laughs> i think citra was just collateral damage i don't yeah. think they cared about citra at all I think that Citra is just being hosted on some Yuzu servers yeah. uh, or Yuzu's GitHub or something. There was some sort of uh, collaboration being had with Citra. So the fact that Yuzu got taken down meant that they had to cease all emulation work mm -hmm. and Citra just had to take the, take the L. Yeah. Um, which is very, very unfortunate because, uh, yeah, like you said, that's not a current thing. I always felt dirty uh, talking about Nintendo Switch emulation because it is a current thing and it's easily yeah. accessible and you can just play the games. It's a lot easier to just play the fucking things on Nintendo Switch. Mm -hmm. But I love 3DS emulation because it's so much harder to get 3DS games yeah. right now. And it's so much easier to just get it and play it however you want to yeah. play it. Um, I saw a commercial today. It's a Japanese commercial from Nintendo about Pokemon and it's it's uh these two kids I think one of them's going off to co they're like brothers and one of them's going yeah. off to college uh and they're having fond memories of playing the 3DS Pokemon X and Y games mm -hmm. and they pick up the Nintendo Switch and they're playing and one of them's playing like the 3DS version and one of them's playing yeah. the Switch version you can't fucking get that game yeah that they were doing it like it's some nostalgia like trip but yeah but if you wanted to play that game, you'd have to go to the used market or, mm -hmm. you know, do other unscrupulous ways. Yeah. And I guess part of the reason why they don't have ways for you to get 3DS games is because you need two screens and yeah. it would be vertical and weird. But, man, I've played 3DS games on so many different devices and it's really not so bad having the screens be next to each other. Yeah. Just let me do it. Yeah. So... Again, it's 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 not the end of the world, but I do there needs to be some I want the I want the right to repair to have some sort of legal standing in 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 our justice system. Right. Uh to protect us the consumers and I want software to be uh a footnote in that. I want software to be uh a, a point there. Right. Because like it could be argued in 20 years, uh, uh, Apple's not going to support this phone. Yeah. In 20 years, this thing's going to be a brick. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be illegal for somebody to make firmware for this phone, this 20-year-old phone, yeah. and distribute it. You know, even though the phone is a brick, like, yeah. I can't use it. I paid for this. I paid fucking like $1,300 oh, for, for this yeah, yeah. phone, and in 20 years, it's going to be a brick? Mm -hmm. Like, if somebody makes firmware... That's great. Now I can use my phone, you know? Yeah. 
they don't need to profit off of it yeah. it could be like a like a side project for them just like emulators should be mm -hmm. um well so, emulators are a side project unless nintendo is using it because let's not forget nintendo does use emulation on uh the switch when it comes to nes games snes games yeah game boy games all those switch online games those are done through <clears throat> emulation nintendo does use and benefit from emulation however if it's anyone outside of nintendo using emulation then all of a sudden it's criminal yeah then all of a sudden it becomes a problem it's okay if nintendo does it but you can't do it that's basically the message they they send out all the time when they go after emulators specifically yeah. they always act like emulators are a problem they stifle creativity. Those are actual words they use when it, they talk about emulation. But they have a team in Europe, it's called Nerd, that makes emulators for them and like refines their emulators yeah. for all their systems. And they have a pretty good internal s situation for the emulators that they, that they do, even though well, they get shit on sometimes. Now but, they do. Yeah. Because let us not forget, when they launched the virtual console on the Wii, <clears throat> the ROM of... Mario Brothers that they put out, Super Mario Brothers, contained code from the version of Super Mario Brothers that had circulated the internet for like five years before that. So that might not be true. That might have. I think it still is. I th I think it got proven uh, false be because the line of code that uh, that that people use mm -hmm. is just part of the game. I think. And like, okay. if you dump the ROM, it's gonna be it's the ROM. There's no. Yeah. It's just the ROM. You, there, there's there's nothing else you can add to it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when I was watching that Pokemon uh, commercial today, <clears throat> I was thinking about how you would be able... Like, your Pokemon game for your Game Boy yeah. is dead and doesn't work. You right. know? Like it's, it's so old, the battery's dead. How would you save your save file, your precious Pokemon save file from when you were a child? Right. How would you be able to grab that without uh, third-party support? With, exactly. Without yeah. without uh, these grassroots efforts to to rip saves and cartridges yeah. and stuff. Nintendo doesn't want me to have a ROM dumper, no. but that's what you need in order to uh, save your your cartridge. It's indicative of the fact that you know game companies don't want you to play old games. They want you to forget about them and move on to the next one, the latest and greatest version. You know, that's why 87, what is it? 87% of games made before 2008 just aren't available or some shit like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, to Nintendo's credit, they do have, they do put out their games, like their classic games more frequently than everyone else does, but it's still not, you know, up to a reasonable rate. And they punish, they actively punish people who try to do that work for them for free. Yeah. Yeah. So uh this again is not the worst case scenario but uh i do fear for the future of uh the rest of the emulators because right uh they, they could keep going they they could keep going for other emulators i mean obviously uh nintendo switch was the big priority for them yeah uh, because that's a current console and i understand their their concern for having people pirate the current console but or older stuff like i want to be able to play freaking rom hacks and yeah. and, and and stuff like uh, th things other people make out of their games like i should be allowed i should be allowed to rip my old mario game and and, and yeah. fuck with it to make new levels and i should be able to allow other people to take their mario games and add my levels to their game you know right. like like fuck give people the tools to fuck with their shit yeah so i don't think this is you know, necessarily going to spell doom and gloom for the emulation community. Um, I think it's, you know, you cut off the head and two more uh, yeah. rise up situation, the Hydra situation, basically. You know, people have been making emulators since the 90s. They're going to continue making emulators. This is not the, the end. There are other Switch emulators out there. There's Ryu Jinx. Yes, there's, that's one. Uh, there's so, like so now, I, I can't find it right now, but... Mm -hmm. uh, People are already taking Yuzu and recompiling it. Uh, yeah, for their own. There's one called Nuzu, which I can't seem to find. Yeah. Um, and I think Suzu might be one, but uh, Yuzu will. It was a public a project, so it will live on. And yeah. also Ryu Jinx, I think, is just fine too. Yeah. 
Um, um, I will say though, I think the it will be harder now than it's been because Nintendo is much more emboldened to go after emulators and ROM dumpers and people like that. Uh, so, like, it's we're not going to see the end, but it's just going to be a bigger fight going forward. I don't know a single uh, 3DS emulator, though, besides... Uh, yeah, Citra was, like, Citra, the yeah. big one. Citra was, like, the only one that I know. Yeah. Uh, also of note, Drastic, which is a DS emulator, is now free. <laughs> um, it used to be paid. Uh, I, again, I think that charging for an emulator is a little, a little dicey. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's where you get into trouble yeah. right there. Panda 3DS is coming out. Okay. Well, hurry up. Tell them to hurry up. I got I Yeah, cuz I know Emudex said that they were going to remove Citra from their lineup because yeah, you know, they they, can't they're use removing that. Citra and and Yuzu, but they yeah. said if you have it installed already, it will still uh Yeah. work, you know. So I mean, again, if you dig deep enough, you'll be able to find all the files that you need for this stuff, yeah. but they won't be updated for future games or whatever. Uh, so this is a bit of an L for emulation, but uh, yeah. it's not the end of the world. And I can't wait for the next 3DS emulator. Because again, you, Switch, I don't really use. I just use it because sometimes I get a new device and uh, I say, did I say 3DS? Switch. Switch emulation I don't really <laughs> use. Uh, because I have a switch. I just use it if the system is yeah. like powerful, just to show that the system's powerful. Right. Uh, but 3DS, I do actually use. I yeah. like 3DS emulation a lot. Being able to play that on all these different devices, like I play on my fucking arcade cabinet, it looks awesome. Uh, not having that sucks. So, all right, we can move on. Let's okay. thank Caleb Fox for the 20 months. Uh, and that's it. All right. Uh, speaking of network emulation, insig the Xbox Live. Oh, Insignia, the Xbox Live replacement has Halo Two coming out soon. So that is, I think, one of the things that also got Yuzu screwed was that they were working on an oh, an online, a Nintendo Switch online component, like mm, a way to yeah. take Yuzu online, and they got caught uh, and had to take a bunch of shit down. Yeah. Um, but where Nintendo can bury people in legal fees, I think Drastic figured it wasn't worth the risk. Yeah, no, it's not. They, they, they you shouldn't have, you shouldn't be profiting off. It's it's amazing that we're able to get away with retro emulators. Yeah. Uh, don't poke the lion, the dragon. Don't poke the bear. Don't poke the bear. Don't poke the bear. <laughs> don't poke him. Don't charge yeah. for your for your emulators. May Peco Peco, thank you for the subscription. Ryujinx literally has an online version that lets you play with people on actual switches. They're gonna get fucked soon. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, we will talk about Rockstar. Yes. Uh, as GTA 6 enters the final development stretch, Rockstar is bringing its developers back to the office five days a week for security and productivity um rockstar is asking developers working on gta 6 to return to office five days a week as the long-awaited sequel enters its final stretch of development per an email from rockstar head of publishing jen uh, colby obtained by bloomberg rockstar's plan is for gta 6 developers to return to the office starting in april for productivity and security reasons the latter is almost certainly at least partially in response to the massive GTA 6 leaks from September 2022 that prematurely brought more than 90 videos and images online, cost Rockstar $5 million and thousands of hours of staff time, and resulted in the lifetime confinement of the hacker in a secure hospital. Most rec more recently, the GTA 6 trailer also leaked a day ahead of its official December reveal. As for productivity, Colby said in the email that Rockstar has... That Rockstar had found tangible benefits from in-work office, from in-office work. I misread that because I know it's bullshit. Um, <laughs> making these changes now puts us in the best position to deliver the next Grand Theft Auto at the level of quality and polish we know it requires, along with publishing roadmap that stretches, that matches the scale and ambition of the game, she said. 
Bloomberg's Jason Schreier, who broke the story, reports employees are not thrilled with Rockstar's decision. Yeah, I mean, okay, so they're getting... The game is a year crunch. out. They're getting to yeah. crunch time. Yes. The, the game is public. We know it's happening. So mm -hmm. they, they're now uh, feeling the, the, the pressure and, and they need to get the game out. Right. But in a year. And the, so basically what they're saying is you got to come to the office and we're going to crunch for an entire year. Yeah. I mean, for a game that big, that makes sense. I'm not saying they should crunch, but it just checks out to me. It's just, it, it's so dumb. It's dumb and it's stupid. It, like it, Everybody yeah, knows pretty dumb. everybody knows work from home works. Like it's secure, it's safe. You know, the good workers are productive and actually do their job and the bad workers are obvious and like you deal with them the way you deal with any other bad worker. It's kind of amazing that things didn't leak as much as they could have considering people were working. The from leaks home. basically came from like the the Rockstar Slack. The the Slack chats that they have. Like the hacker would like break into their slack and like pose as an employee and like steal code and stuff from them. That's how these leaks happen. Mm. Slack is not any more or less secure whether you're in the office or at home. Yeah. It's just the same amount of secure. So them being in the office is not going to prevent all these leaks from happening. Yeah. You know, when Rockstar used to be like in the office all the time, they still had leaks, you know? Grand Theft Auto 6 was just a big deal because it's their biggest game. It's the one everybody's been waiting for. Yeah. So bringing everybody back to the office is not going to make your game any more or less secure. All it's going to do is piss off your employees and, if anything, give them incentive to leak the game themselves. I saw that Last of Us documentary uh, yeah. on The Last of Us 2, um, and they had a big struggle because it was dur developed during COVID. I think they finished development during the COVID lockdowns, and they had to switch to work from home and they weren't set up for that they tried so hard to prevent leaks that they didn't have any of the game assets on any servers yeah so all of their servers that were uh in the office were local servers they didn't have the ability to right to, you know do what they what now comes obvious mm -hmm. um so i'd imagine rockstar is more than set up for work from home. Right. But making people come into the office is a little dumb. I need to see, like, there's a lot of companies now that are doing that. They're f forcing They're trying everybody to, to come yeah. back. I need to see a lot more statistics because I know everybody loves to quote the ones that say that uh, work from home is fine. And I'd like to believe that. I want to know where these people get off thinking that working in the office is be somehow better. It's not. It's it's all it's all mind games. So then, what is it? Then? What's why? Then? Because because they want to control your time. Yeah. They want to basically, you know, have you in one location so that they can control what you do for those eight hours. That's all. Most jobs can be done in four hours a day, maybe even less. Yeah. But they they want you in the office to make sure you are. Focused only on them for those eight hours because God forbid you're home and you know, you're doing your job diligently and you, you take a break to go shopping or you go and you pick up the kids from school or you have to run out to get a light bulb for your uh, kitchen. Cause it went out just now. I used to, yeah, I used to have to like, you know, like you got to get your car inspected. And it's like, yeah, I gotta yeah, take, you gotta a take a whole fucking off day work. off of work to get my car inspected. Or, and then there goes a day of yeah. my of, of my off time. Or, you know, classically, most people don't take sick days because yeah. it's easier to just go to the office sick yeah. and do your job. And, you know, otherwise you have to go, you know, ask for sick day. And it's a whole big thing. You got to put in for it. Some people require a doctor's note. Now you just stay home. You roll over. You log in, you tell them you're not feeling well, you're going to work from home. That's it. Nobody bothers you. I used to have to commute an hour and a half both ways. And if I had to go to the doctor or so, just a regular doctor's appointment, I, I, that would be the whole day. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah, I got to commute an hour and a half in, and then by the time I'm there, I got to leave anyway. Yeah. So it's stupid. Like, like most people just don't 
do the thing like the chores that they need to do because they have to go to the yeah. sit in a fucking office all day. Yeah. And a lot of these places like the mechanic, like the doctor's office, yeah. they close at fucking five. Yeah, the post office. <laughs> the post office. It sucks. It's 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 dumb. It's and, ridiculous. And it's a lot easier to live your life when you can just be like, hey, I'll be right back. I gotta yeah. go to the fucking doctor. Exactly. You know. But so. I, I think the problem one of the problems is that uh like we know the work that we need to do and then we'll do it. Yeah. But uh I know people who are fucking not doing their jobs <laughs> at, at their house, you know? Like there's people like that. Yeah. But you know, they're ruining it for everybody else. Yeah. You know, like I know I, I used to work with a guy who would fucking play Battlefield until <laughs> four o'clock in the afternoon. And everyone was like, Where is he? He's not yeah. answering his Slack messages. And it's like, What are you doing? Oh, I'm fucking I'm playing, playing Battlefield. Playing yeah. Battlefield. So Yeah. That said, if any of my bosses are watching for my nine to five, <laughs> just know that I do do my job when I work from home. As long as they tell you yeah. to do something, you do it. Yeah. You know, what's the problem? That's that's a failure in leadership mm -hmm. and, and a failure in that person who's not doing their job, which yeah. if they're in the office, probably not going to help much. Yeah. Probably still going to suck at their job. If they suck at their job at home, they're going to suck at their job in the office. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. Moving on. Oh, Eric wanted to talk about this. EA canceled the Mandalorian game. Yes, and like we had just the one we about. just yeah. learned about, the one we were so excited about yeah. on this channel. Yeah, and then EA is like swooped in. Uh, EA's like, oh, you like that idea? Yeah, good. Thanks for the feedback. We have to be <laughs> shitty. Yeah. We can't come up with a good idea, so we're gonna have to cancel. That. I mean, this is on top of them already doing something shitty. Uh, February twenty eighth, EA announced a major company shakeup that will result in roughly six hundred and seventy individuals, or five percent of its workforce, losing their jobs. As part of that same reorganization, response Star Wars first person in development game uh, is being canceled. Uh, following CEO and just straight up dumbass uh andrew wilson's announcement of the cuts ea entertainment president uh laura millet millier uh shared a note with staff explaining in more detail what ea's business pro priorities would be going forward this includes her announcement that ea is shutting down an early development star wars fps action game as part of an ongoing focus on its own uh on its own owned brands and supporting its existing games it's always hard to walk away from a project, but this decision is not reflected a uh, reflection of the team's talent, uh, ten tenacity, or passion they have for the game. Uh, giving fans the next installments of classic franchises they want is the definition of blockbuster storytelling and the right place to focus. Not much was known about the Star Wars first-person shooter, but it was rumored to feature the Mandalorian protagonist in some way. Uh, the fate of EA's Star Wars strategy game is also unclear. EA is undertaking the move uh, in part due to what it perceives to be rapid shift towards large open world games, massive communities, and live service games. Cool. Um, IGN understands that the team previously working on the game uh, will largely be reassigned to other projects, including Apex Legends, Iron Man, Black Panther, and the Jedi series, uh, for which EA has confirmed a third installment. The Star Wars Jedi franchise will continue despite EA's move to focus on owned IP, and EA is said to remain focused on its long-standing partnership with Disney and Marvel. So, EA fired 670 individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll note that the CEO last year made $20.7 million, and they had major stock buybacks last year, so all of the executives uh, got their stocks bought back at a premium. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That's exactly how this that should work. It's exactly so how they it's spent to work. all of that money on the executives, and then they're like, ooh, "Ooh, we ran out of money. Oh no, give it to you guys. I can't just fund you out of pocket. Oh no." This after creating terrible decision after terrible decision yeah. as a, as a company, like <laughs> there's there's so many things here. Like there, the Jedi games are factually the only star wars games that people actually liked out of ea mm -hmm. there's gonna be somebody who says oh but i like uh, squadrons and whatnot it, it wasn't that good <laughs> yeah. so the jedi games were 
fundamentally the only games people actually liked, even though EA clearly did not want to make them because they did not think single player only games made money anymore. It's their best selling Star Wars game. They're the most beloved Star Wars games made by Respawn, who has shown to make great game after great game, be it Titanfall 2, be it Apex Legends, or be it the Jedi games. And now you have Respawn making a first person Star Wars game. After, you know, they made the best Star Wars games in years and Titanfall 2, the, the best first person shooter of its generation. And EA's like, no, we don't want you to do what you're good at. Do the games that they make sell a lot? Because so. Well, OK, so they have sports stuff. Yay. Yeah. yeah. So that's like they always have that. Yeah, it's their moneymaker. Yeah. Like the, their fo- their soccer games like dominate. So I'm. Um, I, I pulled up the list of all their games or their published games because I just want to know, like, when was the last time they had a good game? Yeah. Uh, a Jedi Survivor, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dead Space was bad, right? People didn't like that? No, people liked Dead Space. Oh, they people did- didn't like the other one. List of Protocol. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dead Space, okay. That was last year. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll but, allow it. But, you know, the Dead Space remake is essentially EA trying to capitalize on a franchise that fans liked, but EA continually tried to ruin yeah. game after game after game until they released the third game, which was an absolute disaster. Before that, wait, wait what's Titanfall Assault? Probably some dumb mobile Real-time game. strategy mobile game. Yeah. yeah. There you go. I don't... Dragon Age Inquisition, 2014. I think was the last good fucking and I, I EA think, game. I think they're making a new one, but like I don't know if I, I skipped Battlefront two because that wasn't I didn't like that. Yeah, it Battlefront two wasn't good. Um, I legitimately think Dragon Age Inquisition was the last good EA game. Yeah, <laughs> before fucking Dead Space. Yeah, there's Need for Speed. Okay, so yeah. I, those are probably good. Yeah, you know, Dirt Dirt games are good. Mm-hmm. That's that's that. How are they around? How are they one of the biggest game companies on the planet? I think they're just coasting on like all the all the games that they used to make that were really good. Mm-hmm. Like especially like of course the you know the Madden and the FIFA games or Football Club now it's called. Um, all their sports games, of course, make you know bank. But yeah, it's it- just. You know, when it comes to, like, the traditional AAA console space, them, out of, like, all the companies, like, just continue to make, like, the worst decisions. Because, like, they don't really have an original bone in their body. A lot of their games, especially during, like, the 360 PS3 era, they were, like, I don't want to use the term Me Too games, because, like, that has a whole connotation to it. During the what era? The 360 PS3 era. Okay. They were, like, oh, you like Call of Duty? We have that too. It's called Medal of Honor. Oh, oh the, okay. That's what I mean. Like it's, it's us like a, too. It's like a pick me, yeah, pick me game. <laughs> exactly. That's what I meant. It's like, oh, you like God of War? We have Dante's Inferno. Oh, you like Grand Theft Auto? We have The Godfather. You know. You know what though? It worked for them to a point. Yeah. I think it became blatantly obvious what they were doing, mm-hmm. and people like don't like didn't like the new Medal of Honor. They made fun of Dante's Inferno. You know, Godfather One. I liked Godfather One. Nobody liked Godfather 2. Throughout the years, EA had, uh, like, there would be a diamond in the rough every once in a while. Yeah. There'd be a game where I'd load it up and it would say EA Games. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, it's EA. I didn't realize that. I, but for like, the most part, you know you're getting something that's not going to be great. Look, I will defend PS2 era EA because, like, they actually put time and effort All into I'm their games. All I'm thinking of is, is uh, the... Agent Under Fire? Everything no, or Nothing. Night, night, night Fire. You're thinking of Everything or Nothing. The one that was filmed like a movie. Yes. No, uh, Night Fire was also good, but you're the one you're thinking of is Everything or Nothing. No, I'm thinking of Night Fire, the PS2 one? Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking of Night Fire. Look up Everything or Nothing. The one with the motorcycle level. That's Everything or Nothing. Night Fire was the first person shooter. You're thinking of I'm that thinking, one. I'm thinking of everything. <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm thinking of everything. <laughs> yes, like EA, like during, again, during the PS2 era, their James Bond games were really good. Their Lord of the Rings games were really good. You know, they, 
they had a few like you know duds here and there but like when they actually put the time and effort into things they were really like their their um their need for speed games during that era were great but yeah their medal of honor games during that Bur- era were great burnout burnout yeah. yeah medal of honor took a hard dive it did yeah, yeah. but nowadays it's just like they're chasing trends they're innovating in the wrong place they're not giving themselves enough leeway to uh do uh do a fun thing you yeah. know they're not they're not they're not uh or if they try to do like a fun thing there's always like a caveat to it yeah catch. there's always something yeah like a live service thing yeah, exactly um okay moving on star wars strategy game still alive yeah this so ea doesn't want to make a first person mandalorian game which seems to be what everybody wants but apparently the star wars strategy game in development at bit reactor and produced by apex legends and jedi developer respawn has survived that's Uh, because they can microtransact this to all hell that's why uh, some have expressed concern about the fate of the Star Wars strategy game, but a tweet fr- by, devel- by developer BitReactor confirmed it survived the cull. Last week was difficult for the industry and more so because of our strong relationship with others at the teams at Respawn. Um, but for those asking, we are still hard at work and our game ha- was unaffected by the last week's news. In a subsequent tweet, uh, responding to a question asking when the Star Wars strategy game would be unveiled, BitReactor said, uh, as soon as it's ready. Here's what I don't. So understand. we don't know what this game is. No, it was it was game. announced um, in January 2022 alongside two other uh, two others, all overseen by Respawn. Um, the first person shooter has been canceled. Uh, Jedi Three is currently in development, and there's also the strategy game. Here's what I don't understand: strategy games. I'm not before any strategy game fans like come at me and stuff. I'm not saying they're not popular. I'm not saying they don't have an audience. It's just that they typically have a smaller audience than the big budget AAA first person shooter series. Right? So, and EA uh, is I, all about chasing where the money is, the bigger the bigger franchises, the sexier mm-hmm. franchises, you know, first person shooters are sexy. Real uh strategy games not really that sexy. I'm just assuming this is a mobile game. Or has a or or is going to release on a mobile platform as well. So I would argue that if it releases for mobile, it has potential to reach a very wide audience. True, but I just think that when it comes to something like this, you know, usually EA goes for like the low hanging fruit, like you know, a Star Wars first person shooter. People hear those two phrases together. They're going to want to know more. They're going to be invested. They're going to want to see what this is. A yeah. Star Wars strategy game. That's a game for nerds. We don't want <laughs> nerds. We want cool people. First person shooters are cool. I think this is their, them trying to make a clash of clans. That's that's Star Wars. Mm. That's what I think this is. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm assuming it's mobile because it's a strategy game and it's EA. Yeah. You know, and they want to make as much money as possible. Well, it's uh, Bit Reactor, the developer... Um, it was formed by Firaxis Games veterans, best known for their work on XCOM. Oh, so oh, maybe it will be a traditional strategy game like an XCOM or or Command and Conquer or something like. You know, EA owns Command and Conquer. Do they do shit with it? No. Okay, maybe it will be like an XCOM. Yeah. Okay, that, that, uh, I'm not getting any hopes up. No. Um, maybe they decided that the first person shooter game was take was going to require too much money and resources and stuff it might not yeah, be that good probably the problem is ea seems sees all these games that they've made in the past and they're like yeah these didn't really pay off it's because they were bad yeah, yeah. it's not because you didn't shove enough money into it it's not because they were money they, sinks because you, you shoved too much money into yeah, it and then you didn't give the developers the time necessary to actually make the game they wanted to make or, or you fucking purposely like ran it into the ground like titanfall 2 yeah Released it between two... Uh, Released it between a Call of Duty and a Battlefield. Yeah, Battlefield, which they had control over. Yeah. That doesn't that didn't make any fucking yeah. sense at all. Why would you release it next to your other game? Yeah. All right. Well, good news, though. Yes. Toys for Bob is back. Yeah. Not my game. Not your me. game, no. Um, it's been a wild week for the video game industry, and it seems like we're not done yet. After mass layoffs at companies like PlayStation and EA, um, we're now getting developers splitting from their own groups. 
Adding to this is the Crash Bandicoot and Spyro developer Toys for Bob, which has now announced it's leaving Activision and the Xbox team to become an independent studio. Woo. This follows reports of its uh, facility closing down with reportedly 86 workers impacted at the time of Microsoft's mass layoffs. In a message on its own, on a message on its official website, the head of the company, uh, Paul Yan and Avery Lodato, revealed Toys for Bob was excited about developing new stories and characters and was already in the early days of its next new game, but couldn't reveal anything just yet. It's also mentioned how both Microsoft and Activision have been extremely supportive of this decision and the studio plans to explore the possible partnership with Microsoft uh, going forward with the belief it will continue to work closely with both teams. Um, and then down below is the full message. Uh, I'm interested how this works because Microsoft bought Activision. Yes. Uh, and presumably part of the deal was we want Toys for Bob. As part yeah, of they, were, they were part of Activision. Yeah. So what are they just lose Toys for Bob? Like how yeah. does this work? I mean, well, they're not gonna lose the games that Toys for Bob made for Activision, the Spiral yeah, games right. and the Crash right. Bandicoot games. Those are still gonna be on the And they're gonna Microsoft. have a partnership and stuff. Yeah. But now like Toys for Bob, it's it's like when IO Interactive left Square. You know, Square said, like, you know, we don't like the Hitman games you make. Uh so I was like, All right, can we buy ourselves out? And they're like, Yeah, whatever. And then IO went on oh, to make Oh, maybe they bought themselves three. out. Yeah, that's probably what they did. Yeah. Okay. But they're going to keep working with Microsoft. Also, Microsoft seems to let developers kind of do whatever they want. Yeah. Uh, so maybe it was like that. Maybe it's like, hey, as long as you publish for us, we you could do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, but it's good that they announced that they're independent. A week prior to this, people thought they were shutting down completely because yeah. uh, they were moving out of their office. Yeah. Uh, so people were reporting that Toys for Bob was shutting down, which was not true. Yeah. Turns out now we know it's just because they're going independent, which yeah. is good news. Which is good. Yeah. They can, you know, break free and they can make whatever games they want. They don't have to make Crash Bandicoot anymore. Yeah. Nobody should have to make Crash Bandicoot games for the rest of their well, life. Well, no, they don't have to make fucking Call of Duty. True. That's true. They too. were, they were forced to make Call of Duty the last couple of years. Well, everyone's forced to make Call of Duty at some point. I'm making <laughs> Call of Duty right now. Somehow. I make Call of Duty every night. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, it's easy to forget that we have to do this every once in a while. Okay. Backlog! 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 Oh, backlog. Hey, it's that time again. It's time where we take a look at our backlog and we talk about our backlog in a little show called a little show backlog. called Backlog. I'm realizing I didn't mute alerts, but we're not getting any, so that's good. <laughs> All right, so if you don't know how this works, we have an Excel spreadsheet of every game we've ever bought or owned over the past, like, 30, 40 years of being on this planet. And today, we're going to pick one at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we've actually played it. So how many we got? It's like 900 something? 900. I, it's it's 900, 900. Give me a something. 900 uh 69 <laughs> nice I'm not, I'm not making it up it nice. says 69 on my computer right here um ooh, sonic the hedgehog for the game gear ooh, ooh. which wait which one was the one? sonic the hedgehog I, I, I need a i need some gameplay of sonic the hedgehog for the on game the gear. game gear now, this is not a game we grew up with. This is a game we oh, got later. Okay. So it is actually the first Sonic the Hedgehog game just poured into the Game Gear. Technically, yes. Okay. It's it's its own thing. It's got its own story. It's got its it's got a really good soundtrack that's different from the Genesis game. Um, but it is in a sense uh Sonic the Hedgehog on Game Gear. Can you spin dash is the big question. No. So definitely never played this game <laughs> for a few reasons yeah uh so we bought it later probably at a convention i yeah. think i was on a quest one at one point in my life i was on a quest to just get a bunch of game gear games because we had a game gear growing yeah. up what games did we have for the game we gear had sonic the hedgehog 2 okay we had sonic chaos which we covered on this channel that is a great that game. is a really good i game. like that game a lot uh what do we have originally on game gear so sonic chaos sonic 2 sonic drift <laughs> Two. I loved Sonic Drift 2. Yeah. Uh, not a good game, no, but not I, I a good loved game. it growing up. Uh, we had 
G Lock Air Battle. I also loved that game. Probably also not a great game. Yeah, definitely not a good game. We had uh, MLB Baseball. Also played the shit out of that. <laughs> yeah. I loved my game. Gear. Yeah, game, game Gear was sick. Good, yeah. Uh, Tom and Jerry, the movie. Not a good game. Not but, a good game, but yeah. I played a lot of that. Um, yeah, but we're not wait, talking wait, about Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Sonic has passed. <laughs> R.I.P. Sonic. Yeah. Uh, but we're not talking about any of those games. We were talking about Sonic the Hedgehog on Game Gear. So there were a lot of Sonic games on the Game Gear. Yeah. Uh, even Sonic Chaos, people say that the Game Gear version is the worst version. Yeah. Because this, the, the, the resolution's worse. The screen has to be punched in like a yeah. lot. So this game, now that you mentioned that, was also, there's also a Master System version of the game. And that version people prefer because you can play it on a screen and the screen's not only bigger, but zoomed out so you can see more of your surroundings. Yeah, so a lot of Game Gear games had Master System versions and people prefer the Master System yeah. versions for the reason you just said. Mm -hmm. uh, so because of that, uh, that is one reason why this would be a bad game. Yeah. <laughs> because you're already, Sonic's big, the, yeah. the screen is pushed in a lot, and you're Sonic, so you're going fast, so it would be best to see more of the stuff in front of yeah. you. Uh, and you can't, so the game's not that good for it. Also, Sonic 1... I'm a big Sonic guy. Sonic 1, not a great game. Yeah. Sonic 1's a little rough. Yeah. I mean, Sonic 1 is impressive, but Sonic 2 is just a completely, like, it blows it out of the water. Really? The spin dash, the spin dash fixes the game. It does. <laughs> and the thing it's is, It's so like, important for the game. You know, the spin dash is not in the Game Gear version of Sonic 1. It's not even in the Game Gear version of Sonic 2. So Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I will say, though, like, between the two, like, Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 on Game Gear, this one's a little bit better because it's fair. Sonic 2 on Game Gear is, like, unnecessarily hard and unfair a lot of times. This game at least, like, gives you a decent challenge. Like, it doesn't, like, punish you as much as the Sonic okay. 2 does. Uh, also like to point out that the soundtrack for this i believe was done by the same people who did the soundtracks for streets of rage oh so it's got a really banger soundtrack i'm gonna i'm gonna play a little let bit. me just confirm that because actually i can't play it i think i ruined the audio in discord <laughs> so i'll note a couple of things one of mm -hmm. them is that the frame rate's just atrocious i don't know if oh, it's yeah. just the capturing of this of this no, version it's the game gear there's the f the capturing the the frame rate of the game gear especially with fast games is bad <laughs> yeah uh this also notably looks great coming from the game capture but on a the game gear screen is <laughs> even though it was full color and uh had a backlight it was still a pretty bad screen it had yeah. weird ghosting and stuff uh so probably didn't look too great either I'll also say uh, this does not look like Sonic 1 at all. No. This looks like a completely different game. I don't yeah. think this is a port at all. Well, no, it's not. This was uh, developed by a team called Ancient, who okay. again also went on to make Streets of Rage and uh, Revenge of Shinobi. So it was not made by Sonic Team. It was made in tandem with Sonic Team, so that they have like a portable version mm -hmm. in addition to the home console version. But like I said, it's its own beast with its own storyline, with its own uh, mechanics to it and stuff. It's, it's a complement to Sonic on Genesis. It's not the portable version of Sonic on Genesis. I'll also note that uh, I saw him just straight up get a Chaos Emerald in a level. Yeah. So I don't know <laughs> what that would deal with that. Also, I think I have this on uh, the Game Gear Mini. Remember those consoles yes. that came out? The little Game yeah. Gear Mini guys? I think I have this on one of those guys. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty sure I bought this on my quest to get every Sonic game for the Game Gear. That's what it was. I wanted yeah. every single Sonic game for the Game Gear. Do we have every Sonic game for the Game Gear? Are we missing uh, any? I'm pretty sure we're, like, good. We don't. No, we don't. We have Sonic Chaos, Sonic Drift 2, Sonic, Sonic 2, Sonic Triple Trouble. Yeah. I know we're missing Sonic Labyrinth, oh. Sonic Blast, and the two Tails games. Ooh, and I guess Sonic Drift 1, right? Yeah, but that was only released in Japan. Oh, it oh, and Sonic Spinball we don't have on Game Gear. Wow, we're missing a lot. We are missing a lot. I really failed at this quest yeah. <laughs> to get every Sonic game for the Game Gear. So okay. the reason why I wanted to bring up the soundtrack specifically um, is because there's a level in the game. I don't remember the exact level, but the music of that level was later 
remixed and remade for the Janet Jackson song Together Again. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> that is that is a that is a real thing. For this game specifically? That from that game, yes. Wow. Yeah. Where it goes dun 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 Oh, I know that song. Yeah. That's from this That's game. That's from that game. That's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, I think they gave them credit. I don't know. <laughs> but it just shows you that, like, no matter what the context, Sonic the Hedgehog always has good music. It always does have good music. Even if the game is Garbo. Uh, Griffinix in the chat says, all of them, meaning the Game Gear Sonic games, are in Sonic Origins collection, right? I, yes. Is it all of them? Most of them. No, I think it's all of them. They added all the it, ones you just said. Yeah, they added oh. it to Sonic Origins Plus. Uh, people were mad about that because they didn't have the Master System version. Of the game. Yeah, but uh, that's fine. Well, it's yeah. whatever. Uh, so there you go. That's Sonic the Hedgehog for the Game Gear. Uh, not the fondest Game Gear memory, but no, uh, I want to play it now. I want to. I want to give it a no. You know what? I want to play Sonic Labyrinth. No, you don't. No, no, because the whole the whole conceit of Sonic Labyrinth is uh, he loses his shoes and can't run fast. Oh, it's isometric. Yeah, and and he and he's slow. Sonic Chaos is the best one. Sonic Chaos is the best. Yeah, uh, if you if you're gonna play a game, your Sonic game, absolutely play Sonic Chaos. That game rips. Um, yes. I mean, check out Sonic One and Two if you're curious. Triple Trouble is also not bad. Um, Triple Trouble, I think, is the one that I because I haven't played that one. Yeah, that one we do have. The problem is our game gear's busted. I need to fix it. Yeah, uh, there's a there's always like a, there's like one resistor I think that gets just gets shitty. Over yeah, time. well, that it definitely needs a new screen. Uh, isn't it just black? I think that's a resistor. Is it? Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Um. Anyway. Thanks for coming down to the backlog. Yes. Yeah. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for more backlog. And also come to a podcast sometime. Yeah. Bye. Bye. But not you. But not you. You stay. You stay. And you watch. Sit and, down. And you sit here for the next news story. The next news story is Saber Interactive may escape and brace a group. Yes. Death more bug good news. And become a private company. More people breaking away. That's what we want to see. Uh, Revolution. Saber Interactive has reportedly found an exit strategy from the death grip of its parent company, the Embracer Group. Bloomberg reported Thursday that a group of private investors will buy the studio in a deal worth roughly $500 million. Saber would then become a private company with about 3,500 employees. And oh. Gadget emailed a spokesperson from Saber to conf uh, for confirmation about the alleged buyout. The studio has declined to comment. Ugh. Uh, excuse me. The Edward, alleged... Edward Bova says, are you sure this game is worse than the Sonic the Hedgehog 1 Game Boy Advance? Game? We didn't say it was worse. We just said it was bad. Sonic the Hedgehog 1 on Game Boy Advance is an absolute travesty. Okay. There's that. Um, the alleged agreement would be one of Embracer's most significant cost-cutting moves since the collapse of the reported $2 billion deal with a group backed by Saudi Arabia's Sovereign Wealth Fund. Some criticize the imperiled deal as the gaming equivalent of sports washing using popular sporting acquisitions and partnerships to boost beleaguered government's global images. Uh, that, what the fuck? that followed U.S. intelligence uh, conclusion that the Saudi regime murdered Washington Post reporter Jamal Khashoggi in late 2018. What? what? Are we talking about video games? <laughs> yes. They, they are reminding us of the fact that Saudi Arabia, the Saudi Arabia government offered Embracer Group $2 billion uh, in a deal that they backed out of and that led to uh that embracer blames that blames that on all of their financial problems it's not the sole reason for their financial problems but i'm sure that didn't help and the, this article is just also reminding people that the saudi government likes to use lots of money um to hide all of their crimes. human rights crimes i, yes. I understand now I, I um understand. and sports washing because they mostly do it through sports that's and wrestling, they did wrestling. They well, did wrestling, some wrestling is sport. Stuff. Yeah. Oh, is it? It's sports entertainment. <laughs> okay. The, uh, I think you're gonna say it's sports adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> Other cost-cutting moves that Embracer have included laying off 900 employees because they suck, cutting another 50 or so jobs at the course developer uh, Fish Labs, and implementing more layoffs 
um, at Tiny Tino's Wonderland developer, Lost Boys Interactive, Beamdog, Crystal Dynamics, and Saber subsidiary, New World Interactive. Embracer also closed Saints World developer, Volition, and Campfire Cabal. According to Bloomberg, Saber's sale won't affect the studio's role in developing the upcoming Knights of the Old Republic remake. That game has already changed hands once. One of Saber's Eastern European studios took over from Aspire Media in the summer of 2022. I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, Embracer bought Saber for $525 million in 2020 as it scooped up gaming studios left and right. Uh, it acquired at least 27 companies during that period, folding some of them uh, into Saber. Bloomberg reported that the deal to sell Saber to private investors includes the option to bring along multiple Embracer subsidiaries. Uh, one studio that's too far too big to include in the transaction is Gearbox Entertainment. However, Kotaku reported on Thursday that Gearbox CEO Randy Pitcher told staff this week that a decision about the studio's future had been made. He allegedly said he'd be able to share more details with them next month. In the meantime, a cloud of uncertainty envel envelops Gearbox and Embracer's other studios. I've personally been looking for roles elsewhere, not just due to Embracer's layoff fears, but due to pay, an anonymous developer told Kotaku. Vague and in a, ho and in a holding pattern is definitely par for the course at the moment and has been most of 2023. EPS5000 in the YouTube chat says, with all these layoffs, is it even worth it to get into game development? Uh, now is a bad time to be a game developer. This year seems like it's going to be a problem. Getting it into game development now i think uh people are going to be looking for game developers a year from now because they're going to have to hire back all the ones that they fired it's i would say it's not worth it to get into mainstream game development go indie go low budget you know go small because all the problems seem to be with the majors right now i think that this is my advice for a lot of creative fields. Uh, don't wait to be picked up by somebody or for somebody to just give you money to do something. Do it first. Prove that you're capable of doing it first. Yeah. And then, you know, maybe someone will want to pay you to do it for them. So same way I would say goes for game development. Yeah. Like, make your own shit. Uh, especially right now, you'll have a better time making your own shit. Um, and it's a lot of hard work and it requires a lot of time, but you know what? That's fucking showbiz, baby. Yeah. Um, but that, you know, that's good that Saber Interactive is able to is able to break free from the maw of the Embracer group. Because they are just they are the worst. They're like of all the big AAA companies, they are absolutely the dumbest of the of the bunch. Yeah, it seems like they Like what did they think was gonna happen? They saw the dollar signs and bought into the games industry and didn't realize uh, that they had to know anything about the games industry. <laughs> they just saw it as a money laundering thing. Basically. And now there's actual people's lives that they're yeah. playing with. So, good. I'm glad that they were able to yeah. break free from the maw. All right. Uh, plowing through the rest. Aspire. Oh, where they're back. Yeah, Aspire's that. back. It's, we're talking about them for a second time. Uh, Tomb Raider 1 to 3 remastered developer Aspire has confirmed it accidentally released two different versions of the game across Steam and Epic Game Store and changed what some deemed the better version back to the regular bad version. As reported by Eurogamer, players of the remastered trilogy noticed differences uh, between versions, and Twitter user Small Medpack posted a list of them online. The Epic Game Store version of the game included more poses in photo mode, higher quality textures and animations on the Nevada level, uh, more realistic snowflakes, and more, though, and more, though also uh, had some broken achievements. Me so when I'm trying to get Zim to come back inside. <laughs> <laughs> Surprising fans, Embracer deemed this version the unfinished one and has updated it to match the intended version that was released on Steam. The enhancements mentioned above are therefore no longer available in the Epic Games version of the game. Uh, the development build uh, with incomplete assets has been available for download on the Epic Games Store, Aspire uh, said in a post to Steam. Content in the Epic Games Store build contained some in-work-in-progress wor material 
that do not represent our final quality um, expectations. We have corrected the build to match the, the live Steam version. Some fans are understandably confused by the mishap and had expected the Steam version would receive the additional features rather than the Epic version losing them, but it also seemingly included other issues and incomplete assets beyond the broken achievements. A development build of that is superior to what we've got on Steam. Not sure what to make of this mess, um, said Keeper Adnan on Reddit. Um, they make it sound as if the Epic Store Game Store version is worse than the version we got, but from what I've seen on YouTube, it looks much better. Uh, yeah, there were some... It was, it's clear that the Epic Game Store version was an older build, uh, but um, the older build did things better. <laughs> in in, in well, some cases, I think because a lot of times what happens in game development is like they they like shoot for the moon and then they have to scale back. You know, there's the there's the infamous Watchdogs situation where you know the first reveal of the game was like the best looking thing anyone had ever seen at the time, and then when the game actually came out, like the graphical fidelity was significantly scaled back. Mm -hmm. That's because a lot of times like they they push to the limits of what they can do and then they try to roll back, you know, what they what they can actually do. Yeah. And it, I think that's what happened with Tomb Raider. Probably. Yeah. What people probably aren't saying is that that Epic Games Store version probably had other things broken with it. Yeah. <laughs> that 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 yeah. were unforeseen. Yeah, no, that that was mentioned, but that gets overshadowed by all the additional stuff that the Steam version did not get. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe they'll patch that in later. All the yeah, extra like photo future, poses yeah. and stuff and like the enhanced graphics. Down the road, Matt. Yeah. But I just think it's hysterical that Aspire, which is owned by Embracer Group, and Tomb Raider, which is also owned by Embracer Group, had this big, you know, re release and they fucked it up. Yeah, yeah, they 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 did, didn't yeah. they? Uh Ghost of Tsushima coming to PC. Yes. I'm hearing that we might be getting something uh, about Ghost of Tsushima PC port pretty soon. Maybe around the 5th? What's today? The 5th. Okay, so you're wrong. <laughs> and that's the story. There you go. Uh, according to Xbox Era's uh, Nick Baker, who accurately predicted a majority of Sony's recent state of play presentations, uh, posted to Twitter claiming that news on the, on the unannounced but widely expected port would arrive as soon as today. It did not. I'm hearing that we might get uh, something about Ghost of Tsushima PC port pretty soon, maybe on the 5th. Um, Ghost of Tsushima was released in 2020 on the PS4 and later received a director's cut on PS5. Sony's PC output has steadily increased since its first divorced uh, some of its 10 pole single player releases from home console, though it doesn't appear to have led uh, to sparkling sales. Last month, Sony backed Helldivers 2, a sequel to a niche PS4 and Vita game, was released on PC and PS5 simultaneously and became a huge success the game's concurrent player count is easily eclipsed that of all the other PlayStation Studios PC games combined. So, uh, yeah, we didn't need to read all of that because it's not true. Because <laughs> the well, fucking thing didn't happen. <laughs> the announcement didn't happen. Yeah. But I do, I do think a PC port of Ghost of Tsushima is definitely in the works. Yeah. I, I mean, it's been four years it's about that time we would see Sony announce Ghost of Tsushima coming to PS the yes. PC. Yes. Uh, yes. Sony's putting all of their stuff on PC now all of a sudden and Ghost yeah. of Tsushima is notably absent. It's a them. bit it's a big game for them. Yeah. Um I haven't played it. Me neither. I, I have your did I give you your copy back? No, probably not. I want to get that game on PS5, but I want to get it physically because there, if you go to the PS Store, there's like ten different versions of the Ghost of Tsushima, and like not all of them are just just the game. It's like the PS4 version of the game, the PS5 version of the game, the uh, multiplayer add-on to the game, yeah, the, the multiplayer, play, the PS Plus version of the game, which is different from the main you know version you of the do? game. Get the PC port on your Steam Deck. So I actually have a problem with my Steam Deck right now. Oh, and I, no. And I brought it so I can show you and show the good people at home what I'm talking about here. Okay. It's, it's a whole story. Buckle go, in. Go into the story. This is going to be a clip. First, I got to okay. turn this bad boy on. And let me tell you no, my story. Let's, let's give some backstory. I do. That's have, my old Switch. Yeah, this oh, is, my old this Steam This is your deck. old Steam Deck. Yes. Okay. So here's the backstory. Okay. Here's what Is happened. there something that I did? No. Okay. I don't even know if there's something I did. Okay. So here's what happened. Okay. I've been playing Arkham Asylum on my Steam Deck because it's that's your problem. Okay. 
it, it's it's a comfort game. It's relaxing. I play okay. it like to unwind and stuff because it's an older game. I know the game. I like the game. It's you know, it's just I go through it. You know, it's good. I was at the point I had beaten the game, gotten all the Riddler trophies, and I was about to do the last uh, story based collectible you can get in the game. You which, got all the Riddler trophies again? Yes, because there's not that many in this okay, one. Okay, okay, I'll allow it. So the last story based collectible that I needed to get was the Chronicles of Arkham collectibles. And I'm in the room where you collect the last one. Oh. I interacted with an environmental element in the level. And then all of a sudden, Batman freezes. The game's still going. He can't move. I can't control him. The, the buttons stop working. I can't back out. So I shut the system off. I power it on again. And I'm greeted to this screen. Let me, let me read. Current Steam OS. Oh no. I try to, I try every option available on that screen, minus the one that says erase all data. I don't go that far, not yet at least. I, but every time I boot into SteamOS from any one of those options, hmm. none of the buttons work. Or if they do work, they're mapped incorrectly. Have you gotten a button to do anything? Yeah, so if you, if you want to try it, yeah. Go, um, I guess launch the first one. Let it go through the wall of code that has to literally boot up. It's, yeah, yeah. It's a wall of wall of stuff. And what off. you're gonna find is I did wind up ha I did wind up factory resetting that thing at least three times. <laughs> is your is is your uh, Arkham save on the cloud? Oh, I sure hope it is. <laughs> you get Steam on there and see. Actually, I could probably, well, actually, I can't see because the buttons don't fucking work. Yeah. Um, so, okay. and now I have a ticket open with Valve support right now. I'm waiting to hear back from them after the last update because the last update was um, their nuclear option, which is to, you know, flash the new version of the image onto. For the love of God, tell them that you're me when, <laughs> when you do this because I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> actually, I bought this. I'm allowed to do whatever yeah, I want with it. Exactly. This. So, like I, I flashed, oh, we booted. Yeah, it boot, it boots, but now use the D-pad to move. Okay, yeah, it's mapped incorrectly. Yeah, it's mapped incorrectly. Now press the face button. Any of the face, press the, any of the face buttons. They don't do anything. They don't do anything. Okay. Press the right bumper. You, Take took, a, you took a screenshot. Yeah. Nothing works. Okay. Oh, you got a mouse though. Yeah, I do have a mouse. That's it. Okay. Hold 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 your horses. Well, we can go to the controller settings and we can fuck around. Well, test begin begin input test. Hey, hey. What? Do you think I didn't try that? Do you think I didn't try to test the input or remap the buttons? Why does the left stick act as a mouse? That's a good question. It thinks that all all the buttons work. All the buttons work except when you want it to do something. It's in it's like weirdly in desktop mode. yeah and i but here's the thing i factory resetted the thing three times i flashed the image that like they make you go through the whole rigmarole of like downloading the new source code onto a thumb drive reformatting the thumb drive plugging it into there so you can like you know reflash it from the thumb drive i did all that nothing is working <laughs> okay okay hold on So th this is so this is just a nice reminder that PC gaming is dumb <laughs> and consoles are clearly superior because I've never had this problem with any console I've ever owned. Yeah. This is the, the problem the, with PC gaming. If something goes wrong, you fucked, boy. The big argument in favor of the Steam Deck is that it makes PC gaming really easy. But issues like this invalidate some of that argument. And uh, to remind people. I was in the middle of a game. I wasn't doing anything to like, you know, I wasn't doing anything outside of the norm of the game. I didn't have like, you know, hacked programs running. I wasn't, you know, modding it or anything. It was the Steam version of the game that I downloaded to the thing. So. Does the Steam Deck have a PC mode slash game mode button press? No. No. Well, not that I know of. Uh, that's some big Greg Miller energy there. Well, yeah, well, guess what? Greg was right. 
Why why would you not believe him? There's an option that says use Nintendo button layout. That I did see. That I found Was interesting. that added by MU Deck? I don't think Cause, so. Because they can't say that, right? No, they can. They can't they, they can say it, Nintendo? A, it supports Joy-Cons. Okay. Good, so. good point. So yeah, that's 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 my life. It's just yeah. the controller right now. But no, even I if I shut down the Steam Deck mm -hmm. and I turn it on again, it goes it goes back to that boot menu. Is something being held down? I don't. That's it, a... Wait. Okay. The shoulder button takes a screenshot. Somebody in the chat tell me the macro for taking a screenshot on the Steam I think deck. it's holding left bumper and right bumper at the same time. Not just the right bumper. Oh, I just hit B and it took a screenshot. Yeah. So. What's the uh, macro? Megan, Megan love it. If the right bumper is taking a screenshot, it sounds like one of the steam buttons might be stuck down. Oh, okay. That would answer why when it boots, it uh, boots into the... Because you're holding down a button while you're turning the system off. So is the steam button stuck then? The right three button one is not uh, working. No. None of the buttons are working. No, it's not working on the fucking oh. uh, menu here. That button might be screwed. But that's not the Steam button. The other one's the Steam button. That button shows up on here. Right, but if you, if you go... See, if you, hold down, you can't hold down B to exit out. I, I know. <laughs> All of the buttons work in this, in this button tester... Except for the three dot button. Okay. It's the only button that does not work. Leading me to believe that that's the button that you hold down to turn the system on, to turn it into that boot menu. But that's, that's not the... causing all of the problems. It's not the C button, but it's probably the button that they mean. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it's doing this thing that... Yeah, the D pad should not be A and B. <laughs> I think that uh, we need to open this up. Oh, boy. You might be able to get away with just unscrewing this. Okay. Please hold. Okay. Oh, boy. You can go to the next news. All right. I'll go to the next news story. I didn't expect, I didn't expect to do console surgery on this podcast. I just wanted to complain. I just wanted to complain because, you know, the whole time people were talking about like, oh man, the Steam Deck's great and whatnot. And like, you know, I let them have their fun. Then I got and I got, I bought into the hype and all of a sudden- and it was fun for a while. And it was fun it for a while until it wasn't fun. <laughs> I said on this very podcast that I would be more than happy to buy that thing when it goes to $5 after Valve, you know, yeah. stops supporting it, like to do all their other hardware. I wish I would have stuck by that. <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3 is the first Xbox game on four discs. Xbox Whoa. physical version of Baldur's Gate 3 will release across four discs, making it the first Series X game to do so. That doesn't make any sense because uh, there are games that are bigger than that. Yeah. Uh, earlier this month, Larian director and pu director of publishing uh, Michael Douse uh, uh, suggested the Xbox physical version of the hit RPG may release on four discs rather than the original plan of three, calling it a very dynamic situation. However... He has now confirmed that the extra fourth disc is indeed needed. As previously announced, the PS5 version ships on two discs, while the PC version is just one. Uh, the Xbox retail version of Baldur's Gate 3 will indeed have four discs, uh, since we're 500 megabytes over the limit for three, uh, Dow shared on Twitter. Only option would have been to cut some content out, uh, but that didn't make sense, so coming four. So confirming four. Uh, Douse went on to state that this means it is uh, probable uh, that the first wave of shipping for the physical version of Baldur's Gate 3 on Xbox will slip to the first week of April. Uh, we're start, we'll start shipping the SKU in order of readiness, PC first. Dow shared, no, disc makes, uh, no discs makes life easy. Four discs are hard. In a subsequent post, Dow suggested that the first wave of shipments on the PS5 version will be in April, although the team doesn't have an exact date yet. Um, it's crazy to me that we live in an age where like a multiple disc version of a game is necessary. 
especially when like most games the disc is literally just authentication code and like everything is downloaded yeah i guess they didn't want to be those guys that uh makes you download all of the stuff uh for their game but still yeah it sounds like there was room for optimization i mean and at the same time like you're still gonna probably have to download yeah, content and stuff. I'm, I'm and, curious to see what like the download's gonna look if like. It, if they're releasing the game on four discs, like that means there has to be game content on all of those discs, right? You know, because most games, if it's you know, if it's a two disc game nowadays, disc one is all the code that it installs, and then disc two is the play disc. You don't have so, a, a SD card in here. No, I took it out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but look, good on them for, you know, actually doing what physical media is supposed to do, which is have the game on it. Yeah, I'm curious, again, what they could have done to uh, make it not four discs, because they're the only one (laughs) to make it four discs. Uh, But uh, good on them for making it so you don't have to download all this stuff. But why? And then again, like, you know, PS5 uses the same discs as Xbox. Why is it only two discs? That is a very good question. Yeah. So, all right. I don't know. I'm not a game developer. I can't answer that. Next news: Xbox is having a partner preview tomorrow. Oh, it's going to have um, new releases. It's going to have um, information on games from Capcom, Nexon, EA, and others. Um, we will learn more about Tales of Kinzera Zhao um, with a Yay. video narr- narrated by uh, the developer himself. I will see new gameplay from uh, Kunitsu Gami, Path of the Goddess. Ooh, Get a closer favorite. look at the first Berserker Kazan and other great titles coming to Xbox Windows and Game Pass. Um, the event will be broadcast digitally uh, Wednesday, March 6th at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, um, and 6 p.m. Greater Mountain Time. Um, you know, they advertise those three games. Anybody here here listening heard of them? Oh, I muted us. Okay. Uh, Anybody? That was good because it made it sound like uh, nobody was answering. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've never heard of any of those games. Yeah. I think I only lost one of your screws, Will. Okay. I can just go to ifixit.com and buy a new one. Uh, this one's not coming out. This one's an important one. Stylic, uh, to be fair, Will, Bob is the one who put that together, so maybe it finally just got itself stuck. I also... Uh, was reminded that uh, I severed the cable for one of the speakers on this one, and I soldered it back together. <laughs> <laughs> so this Steam Deck has seen better days. Mm. Now, the buttons on this are aftermarket buttons. Yes. But uh, it's not being held down. Like, I could, I could press it. And I feel it actuating, so... Right. That shouldn't be a problem. It, uh, but I was wondering, maybe there's some pressure on it i was trying to relieve it by unscrewing it a little bit but now i'm just going to open the whole thing up and see if there's something going on with the button i mean at this point you might as well i already unscrewed all the screws might as well all right luckily the steam deck is very easy yeah it's just your fingers there she is Is that the one you lost or nope all right when i get up Last news, uh, Warner Brothers discusses volatile AAA console games will lean into free-to-play and mobile, because of course they will. During a recent Morgan Stanley speaking event, Warner Brothers Discovery gaming boss J.B. Uh, Perrette discussed, it, discussed some of the company's strategy for gaming going forward, and it includes more live service, mobile, and free-to-play games. He said, we're doubling down on games as an area where we think there is a lot more growth opportunity that we can tap into with the IP uh, that we have and some of the capabilities we have on, on the studio uh, where we're uniquely positioned as a, both a publisher and developer of games. Perrette said Warner Brothers' uh, recent gaming output has focused on AAA, game console, AAA games for consoles, and that's great when, the game, when a game like Hogwarts Legacy sells 22 million copies and becomes the best-selling game of the year. But this kind of success is never guaranteed in what Perrette calls a volatile market. He pointed out that one of Warner Brothers' latest big games, Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League, was a disappointment for the company. 
Uh, so the plan going forward, he said, is to help reduce volatility uh, by focusing on core franchises and bringing at least some of them to mobile and free-to-play space, as well as continuing to invest in live service games that people play and spend money on over a long period of time. This will help Warner Brothers uh, generate more consistent revenue, he said, uh, going on to tease that Warner Brothers had some new mobile free-to-play games coming this year. Uh, also worth noting is uh, that just because Warner Brothers may push into new places doesn't necessarily mean it will stop making big single-player AAA games. Well, I won't say. Um, rather than just launching a one-and-done console game, how do we develop a game around, for example, Hogwarts Legacy or Harry Potter? That is a live service where people can live and work and build and play in a world in an ongoing basis, he said. So that sentence right there completely contradicts the line, the sentence previously that GameStop just wrote. <laughs> This is like working on a uh, brain while they're alive. Still. Oh, I didn't know you had it on. Oh, I have it on, baby. I got the I got the back off of all the things. On. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna have to work on this after. Uh, yeah, because I have to take that chip out, and I don't want to do it in my right. lap because I'm gonna lose more screws. But I think there's hope here. Okay, I hope so. Maybe maybe I'll film it with my phone and put it on the. You said you want to make a clip out of this. You can make a clip out of it. I thought you you said you want, you said this is gonna be a clip. Oh yeah, no, it's, it can be a clip, but like you filming that on your phone, like you could be one of them TikToks or whatever you kids do. <laughs> TikToks, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, Warner Brothers, their biggest game this year was a live service game and it didn't do well, so their answer is more live service games. Uh, that's very dumb. It is incredibly dumb. I love how like the, he's blaming like the fact that it was a AAA console game, like that was the problem. I saw uh, Multiverses, the Twitter account, tweeted, hey, is this thing still on? Uh, what was it? Why? Why would they? Are they coming back? Did they go away? Yeah, they went away. Did the game come out? The game came out. The game out. came out, but it was in beta. Oh. Oh, so the game actually never actually It never came like out. officially came out. I think it's like okay. actually coming out. That's dumb. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's all the news. Yeah. Let's, uh, I do have one of these. Quit of the oh. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Uh, I don't know if this is going to play with audio, but here, I'll just show you up top. Okay. What is this? <laughs> it's the unknown! <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Worried mother, scared child, and scared child too. <laughs> The Unknown is a meme from that shitty Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory thing. nightmare thing that yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, kind of a cool idea for a, for a bad guy, though. Yeah. I'm surprised. For a bad guy in Willy Wonka. Yeah. Who's the... I mean, Willy Wonka is the bad guy. Willy Wonka is the bad guy yeah. in that series. But imagine yeah. if there's another bad... Like yeah. a badder guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh, Valve's GitHub had people complaining about the Steam Deck crashing on them in the latest update, says uh, Jim hmm. Flatter Snow. Interesting. Okay. Can we revert back? I tried. It's like, because it, um, in the boot menu had previous, you know, Steam Deck OS, and I tried going into that, and it's the same problem. Okay. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, we'll talk to you guys now. Yes. Starting with people who have comments on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. Uh, we got sweating because I'm so heated talking about PC gaming being dumb. Lord of Cicadas. I have never had an issue with downloading a game to my PS5 from the app outside of widespread power outages. I think you're doing something wrong. Of course. It's always user error. It's never... A user experience error. I mean, what if you tried to download to the PS5? No, this is you. This is you uh, talking about using, uh, downloading stuff off of, we were talking about this last week, about how uh, using like the website or the app to download something to your PS5. Like when you purchase something yeah. and it downloads to the I PS5. I said something negative about that? I think, didn't we both say that it fucking doesn't work? That it only works half the time? I don't remember. I just... That only works half the time on like basically every platform. <laughs> I've had it, I've had it work. 
And I've had. Oh it, no, it, we were talking about Steam Deck. I think. That's what it was. Steam Deck, Steam Deck. Work. Yes, that's what it was. Yeah, see, the consoles are better because on PS5, the app just works and it notifies you when it's done mess, uh, downloading to the PS5. I think my... I'm I'm probably am the one who was shitting on the PlayStation 5 now that I think about yeah. it. And probably the issue for me was that my, see, my, my PlayStation 5 is off and I never turned it off. It's yeah. just off. Yeah, no, I've... The PlayStation 5, I've downloaded games from my phone yeah. to it. I do that with the Switch, and the Switch doesn't. And it gives job. me a nice little, like, you know, notification, like, "Hey, it's done. You want to play it?" I'm like, mm -hmm. "No, nah, I gotta look after the kids. But when they go to bed, I'll play it." Uh, De Desrecas says the problem is, it seems like Yuzu has dropped the ball when it comes to what they were doing that allows <laughs> Nintendo to have this much evidence against them. It seems like they are going for a negligence. Is still negligence is still guilt kind of argument and if they show yuzu did nothing to prevent or try and stop these examples nintendo is using then yuzu can, i'm having a hard time reading this <laughs> i feel nintendo is making sure their old games are on switch online and available specifically to combat emulators in totality uh they're not doing a good job of that they may have even use some like analog as as an example of ways you can buy older Nintendo games showing their sale record? No, they're not going to do that. Fred, why did you pull this <laughs> fucking comment? <laughs> Yuzu probably made a huge mistake being a company, and that makes them a first-class choice. Fred, that was a bad <laughs> fucking years of pulling comments, and, and fucking you took an L there. Melon says, Bob needs to complain about more stuff. Hey, quick, make some videos about how Nintendo should make a little handheld guy so we get a Switch to Bob edition. There you go. That's a good, I mean, the point. problem is with Nintendo, they'd probably just be like, fuck you. I do think, if especially if they're making a more powerful Switch 2 type thing. Yeah. Is room in the market for a little guy. Uh, I just want to say that, like, uh, Steam support sent me an update on it. It's a oh. long, it's a long one, so we'll have to do talk show to you on off camera. Okay. I don't want to spend the rest of the show monopolizing the time talking about how much I hate PC gaming <laughs> and Steam right now. <laughs> Good, because I was about to fucking break that bitch <laughs> open. Uh, Eddie Yoshi says I'm big into the Switch modding and hacking scene and just general modding. Nintendo going after Yuzu is super frustrating. Yes, emulation opens up piracy, but most times people who use emulators are the super fans. You have to be a big fan of a console to want to emulate it in the first place. I have Yuzu and only use it for one game, Tears of the Kingdom, which I bought on launch day and saw how badly it runs on my launch Switch. Yeah. I'm seeing this a lot. People saying that uh, people who use emulators uh, are mostly doing it for piracy. Um, it's kind of similar to saying how uh, people who pirate media the most also spend the most on media. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly... That argument isn't exactly a, a, a way to combat people who say most people who emulate are pirating. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think most of the people who emulate are the super fans and they own most, if not all of the games that they're emulating. Yeah. Uh, but it's just so much easier to pirate the game. Even like, even if you own tears of the kingdom and you downloaded it, it's still an illegal download. Yeah. So, uh, again, I want user to be around and I want switch emulators to be around. But, yeah. uh, um, there needs to be some sort of legal way that we know isn't going to get shut down by Nintendo, or at least that they wouldn't have any legal standing to shut down. Yeah. I think, I think the big thing was the fact that it was a switch emulator while the switch was still on the market. Mm -hmm. I think if this was like, you know, even like five years later, it wouldn't have been a problem, but you know. Uh, a Bento in the chat says that's basically a second copy of the game. Yeah, like like saying I have the game and then going yeah. into Target and taking another copy of the game. <laughs> like you gotta pay for that. Yeah. There again, there's a cryptographic key on every game, and uh, the one you download off the internet is different from the one that you have on on your person. Mm -hmm. 
Um, anyway, Charlie Fenn says, how can Warner Brothers go from licensing one of the best-selling games of last year, despite a lot of press and awards not wanting to touch base, to touch because of the controversy, Hogwarts Legacy, to then being attached to something that in theory could have done really well the following year with Suicide Squad and it being one of the worst games ever. What a contrast. I bet they can't wait for the next Hogwarts Legacy to release now. Well, as we as we talked about before, clearly they learned no lessons because they said they're going to double down on live service games. They, they think that the problem with Suicide Squad was the fact that it was a AAA console game. Not the fact that it was a AAA console game with egregious life service elements and microtransactions in it to the detriment of the gaming experience. Yeah. Um, I think success for big companies comes in waves and they're on the uh they're on the ebb. I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Warner Brothers as a whole is a disaster right now. Yeah. You know, between shutting down completed movies to not see the light, to get a minuscule tax uh, credit as opposed to whatever they could have made in the box office, you know, laying people off, gutting their own streaming service, you know, to try and save face and stuff. You know, I, I'll say, like, I'm pretty sure that Warner Brothers was in a bad state before David Zaslav came in, and some, some, some of the things he's doing are, like, probably necessary to try and get the company back on track but you cannot tell me with a straight face that canceling Batgirl was the right thing to do because it would have embarrassed the company when the Flash was released yeah, <laughs> yeah. so um, there's that Mr. Terry Chaos in the ch YouTube chat says uh, Nintendo considers backing up your games illegal with a that two dollar uh, two euros. That's true. They do consider like if two you pounds. if you buy the game, that's a pound. Uh, if you buy the game and you rip it to your computer, they consider that illegal. Yes, and it I think is illegal. It's in not Japan. Well, in Japan, yeah, I think not... it's illegal in Japan. Okay, in America, it's not. But they could make it illegal. Yeah. Which is incredibly scary. And that's why we talked so much earlier in the show about the right to repair. Well, I don't know, because that would also say, like, because it's legal to rip a copy of a CD to your computer. It's a, it's legal to rip a copy of a DVD or Blu-ray to your computer. Right. They don't want you to, but you can. Now, what about messing with the game? I have a copy of Super Mario 64. Mm -hmm. I can rip the ROM to my computer. And I have a ROM editor. I can edit the ROM. Same thing with Pokemon. I think as long, you know, as long as you don't distribute it for profit, you should be fine. Mm -hmm. Steven Soderbergh, um, you know, film director Steven Soderbergh uploaded a, a fan edit of Raiders of the Lost Ark in black and white with no dialogue, just audio, to show that the visual just the, video, just yeah, video. Uh, the importance of the visual language of the movie. He messed with the original copy. That's not illegal because he didn't sell it. He just posted it on his Vimeo account. And that's fine. I'm also sure of the fact that he's Steven Soderbergh. He like yeah, he got, he got he away with it. Help. But like... Anyway, the right to repair is supposed to be fighting for stuff like that. Like uh, yeah. the whole... The John Deere case is the big case where they were trying yeah. to make it so that if you wanted to fix your tractor, you had to pay John Deere. You couldn't do it yourself. Uh, and a lot of that was software based. Mm -hmm. Um, same thing here. I should be able to take my software that I purchased, upload it and fuck around with it. However I want. Anyway, uh, uh, we on. had a, uh, turbulent, uh, RIP with, um, two months. Sonic the Hedgehog for Game Gear is the first game. Sonic the Hedgehog for Game Gear is the game that made me a gamer. Wow. <laughs> I it, mean, it, it can only go up from there. <laughs> Congrats, man. I mean, I would argue that, like, Sonic the Hedgehog on Genesis made me a gamer. Mm -hmm. Because, well, like, well, Mario, like, made me play video games. But, like, Sonic the Hedgehog was, like, the first one where I was aware of, like, more. Two. Two. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Well, Sonic 
the character and then the first game we played was sonic 2 right and like that whole like made me aware of like gaming beyond just what the nes was there were multiple platforms there were different types of games right there was a series of games you know things like that so sonic the hedgehog creates creates gamers i like sonic yeah sonic. i wish sonic rules i wish he still ruled <laughs> Uh, Tynology in the chat earlier said, um, uh, where was it? You said, you said earlier in the chat, you, you, there it is. I put my band's music on a video I made and got claimed by my record label. <laughs> I put Kirk Fogg's African Adventure on a, I played it during a live stream mm -hmm. and that got claimed by something. Okay. So I texted our buddies and I was like, who fucking yeah. did this? Who who put it on? Who copyrighted our songs? Yeah. Uh, and I was like, that means that I can't use it for yeah. anything. And basically just too bad. Wow. Yeah. So. Unbelievable. That means one person in the band is profiting off of that music. But to be fair, they're not making any money yeah. off that, that fucking music. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, that's bad. That sucks. Yeah. DJ Skeletor, thank you for the five gifted subs from a while ago. I think you gifted those while we were doing the backlog. Uh, and C Soul, thank you for the 31 months. Um, I think that's it. It's all the notifications. Bob and Will. That's Some, us. Something Mario 10 will see Nintendo share. Okay. Cool. Nintendo did a celebration. For, they're doing a celebration for Mario for yeah. Mario Day. Yeah, the tenth March. Of March. 10th, yeah, uh, and they played all of. They played like a highlight reel of all of the Mario games. Uh, you have it right there. Yeah, the ones that you can play on the Switch. Yes, uh, notably, uh, Sunshine and Galaxy are absent. Yeah, because you can't purchase those. I mean, to be to be fair, uh, the Switch you can play a lot of Mario games on the Switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it's just a shame you can't play all the Mario games on the Switch. You can you know, almost. You can. E you easily could. You easily could. They're yeah. there. Yeah. They are there, and we know that they work. Yeah. But they just did some weird dumb shit for some reason. Mm -hmm. Guys, thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on Twitch.tv slash Wolfden and YouTube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. But if you can't make the show for any reason at all, you can always check out the archive version over on YouTube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. You can watch us on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well because we're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service, be it Apple Podcasts, uh, YouTube Podcasts, Spotify, Audible, Wherever we are, that's where we are. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps with the placement on all of those respective platforms. Guys, it's been a while since you've seen Willow Davis. Oh! Go watch Willow Davis. I'll see you... I might do a Cheeky Wednesday stream. I'm not Ooh. sure, though. Uh, this week's video is on the Steam Deck. Oh, boy! <laughs> uh, my broken Steam Deck. Yeah. Oh, the, the OLED uh, burned in. Oh, okay. Got an update on that. Uh, I'll see you Thursday for a video, definitely. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching the podcast. And we will see you later. Goodbye. Bye.